All right. All right. Here we are. Once again. We have the speed, as they say in the biz. What biz? Is that the, the media. No. When you're when you are speeding, it is no, when when you say I have you have the speed. It is I'm I'm recording. No. Why? Uh, because well, I think it goes back to like tape recording when like you had to wait for the tape drive to like ramp up to the recording speed mm. so when it was at a proper recording tempo with the tape you would say you have speed oh, okay uh don't quote me on that that I'm, i pulled i pulled something out my ass from back when i was in college that may or may not be riddled with inaccuracies well i'm going to quote you exclusively uh, when it comes to this thing that I probably won't talk about with anyone ever again. Yep. Riddled with inaccuracies could be the subtitle of the podcast. It really when could. You, when you think about it, really. I mean, is it though? Riddled with... Late, idiocracies. With, with idiocracy and late news, That's I would fair. say. That's fair. I would say. Um, but this, our Lord and of... I'm just going to move on from that. All right. This our Lord's Day of the podcast recording. I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. We are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. But. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, took a, we took a little. Uh, little we're a little late. We're a little, a little late. late. We took a little, little, a little hot late. second getting to this but podcast. The, the Dungeon Bros podcast is. Has not missed a day. Not yet. Yet. Uh, we've not posted at the normal, regularly scheduled twelve thirty Pacific stand, not Pacific, Eastern. PM Eastern Standard Time mm. that we always post. Not always that we try to always post. Um, we're recording this on Tuesday, and it goes live on Wednesday. It goes live tomorrow, the twenty first. So wish me luck editing it at work tonight. Good luck, and tomorrow morning, and posting it. So I'm 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 thrilled to be here thrilled to be here now sam yes it's christmas time yeah it's very soon this is this is the christmas episode of the podcast and um i was going to give you a gift ah uh but Terrifying. instead we decided to just each get each other a random pack of magic cards that is not relevant in any way to anything that we're doing nope and then we threw them at each other when they arrived yep pretty much pretty much but um i got here, the, these minis. We've added the collection of minis. Awesome, awesome. I'll just friend, friend of put it right here. Friend of both mine personally, uh, a coworker, and friend of friend of the show, fellow content creator, Mick makes magic. Got these for me for Christmas. So we're just gonna. I don't know. Right. I don't know about right. I mean, we're just. Well, we'll just put it right there. The Not being, a the being will lay on them. Yes, the probably. cat will. The cat will make her appearance. She joined us at the beginning, very briefly. Very briefly before we hit record, and Saturday. then she got bored. She and got bored. wandered off immediately. Bored and is currently sitting in a chair next to me. So she's very cute over here, but for, seems to be a little bit shy in front of the camera, or just doesn't care. Has no realization that the camera is even happening. So, yeah. Sorry. Um, I'll bring it up with her in her performance review at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, scoring some below standard on a few things. Yeah. Uh, uh, keeping her defecation in the litter box is her lowest mark. Mm -hmm. By far. Oh, every day it's a, it's a struggle. By far. Fresh, clean litter box. Fresh, clean litter. I've tried a couple different kinds of litter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Uh, we've, we've, and, and don't worry about her health. She has a clean bill of health. I got. I took her to the vet earlier this this fall, like October, I think, maybe November. I don't remember. Uh, she was she was a little bit sick, and then got her shots, and she was fine. Mm -hmm. But let's get. Let, we, we've got we've got some housekeeping to do. We do. We have some housekeeping. Wanna wanna shout out? We had a bonus episode of the podcast last week. We said it might happen. It did happen. Woo. A uh, friend of the show, personal friend of mine, Norb, uh, a.k.a. Fell the Leb on the YouTubes. Uh, he joined us in, in, in person, an in-person guest in our home because yeah. we live in the same area, the greater Cincinnati area. Yes. It is very great here. It's 
greater greater than you would expect in Cincinnati area than you would expect and we talked we went a bit deeper into the cleric unearthed arcana we also just kind of shot the shit for like 45 minutes before we talked about the cleric ua so there's that it's a whole thing we love norb uh we 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 would love to have him on again in the near future for future one D unearthed arcana so i think that'd be fun let's fill the lib on youtube go fill check the them out yes and uh yeah if you're not subscribed to us do that do as that. well in the we link tree you. in the bio uh fell the web is not in the link tree in the bio you'll need to literally search fell the web that is f-e-l-t-h-e-l-e-b because i'm not going to include it in our own link tree that'd be that'd confusing be weird. that'd, that'd be, be confusing weird. all right so we're not going to do that but you can subscribe to us on the youtube you can follow us on the instagram and uh you can join our discord server where like i don't know last count like Almost 300 people? Almost 300 people. Let's see. 30, uh, like 260 some odd people. Okay. That's still pretty good. Uh, we've had a couple server boosters. We had a giveaway recently. We want to do some like Discord Nitro giveaways in the in the future. Uh, but things have calmed down on the Discord because it is the holiday it season. It is the holiday season, as we have previously mentioned. And we'll probably not mention anymore. There's not a lot of D&D holiday news. Holiday news, indeed. But um, we, we may or may not set aside the four hours to partake in the one year Christmas tradition that we have here in this house the, of which we only did last year to watch uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas yes the critical role one shot that was DM'd by Liam O'Brien and is the first introduction of Chetney yeah <laughs> as, as, a, as a Christmas elf <laughs> so that's fun that's a neat little 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 insight there um a couple other things we want to get into real quick. Uh, Dragon Lance is out. Shadow of the Dragon Queen and the Heroes of Kryn released on December 6th. We are not really talking about it because we don't have the book right we now. We kind of forgot about the release, to be honest. Yeah, well, we didn't have to be, but now we have to be honest. Yes, we forgot the release. So that's out. Uh, I still want to run a Dragon Lance game with my family because I think that'd be really fun and Dragon Lance is cool. Uh, not getting the board game, Heroes of Kryn, so... I mean, it's an option. It's a standalone and an optional part of the adventure if you want to replace some of the, I believe, mass combat encounters yeah. with it. Um, but otherwise, you could just run normal encounters. Mm-hmm. Also, a quick mention: there is uh, a bit of news going around about concept art for uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves that uh, was released to, I believe, EW Online. Uh, we're not really going to talk about it just because it didn't show anything particularly cool it showed an owlbear it showed it showed the scene of the druid transforming from a horse into an owlbear Mm -hmm. or from on a horse into an owlbear and then showed the mimic thing that we saw in the trailer and then showed a little bit of icewind dale i mean it's it's cool not really worth talking about all that much uh also some upcoming magically gathering releases this is more sam's thing yeah we got uh, dominaria remastered is coming out january 13th uh that's going to be as we've talked about previously, there was the the thirtieth the thirtieth anniversary of Magic was a disappointment at to say the least. Uh, and there's more to say about that. You can go check out previous versions uh, releases of the podcast to hear about that. Um, that will be an actual reprinting of a lot of cards that have come out over the past thirty years. Uh, and then Phyrexia All Will Be One, the next uh, leg in the arc of the uh, Dominaria United, uh, that will be released on February tenth. It's the day after my birthday. And we'll probably have a box on the we'll set box on the way. So, oh, we already do. Oh, yeah, you pre-ordered it. I wasn't thinking. I don't like pre-ordering, but I had the I had the eight percent cash back, mm-hmm. and I had store credit, so I'm like, might as well. Yeah, uh, we we like to buy Magic the Gathering singles on TCG Player, and uh, not a great track record <laughs> so far. Yeah, they've lost two of uh, two packages, two packages, but they were the large number of cards. So I feel like that is probably part of the problem. Uh, but we got s- store credit plus a dollar yeah. on our order, and then we basically used all of the store credit we had because on the other day they had like an eight percent bonus cash back, blah blah whatever thing. Anyway, one more thing. Uh, tomorrow, if you're listening to the podcast today, or today if you're listening to the podcast as it releases, the Unearth Arcana Cleric UA survey drops yes very important uh that is the only way that i mean obviously reddit threads and twitter and all of that they pay attention to but if you really want to actually change something about one D, 
which we'll get into something that people are very upset about one D&D in a little bit, uh, you need to fill out the surveys. That is where they're making their changes based on mm-hmm. input from. So feel free. There's like an entire blank section. You can write whatever you want. And they basically just give you no character limit, I think. And you can just go, go and talk about go whatever ham. you want to talk about there. Um, we skipped the D and draft last week just because there was so much to talk about. Just so much. And we were a bit under a time crunch, as we often are when recording the podcast. But uh, when we last left the D and draft, it was uh, the video games category. Sam had a selection of Minecraft, Skyrim, Apex Legends, Assassin's Creed Two, Assassin's Creed Two, ugh, and Bloodborne, both uh, that I couldn't say it. And also Assassin's Creed, yeah, whatever. I know you love Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I know. Yeah, go to hell. It's fine. <laughs> and then my team was Tetris, the original Call of Duty, Modern Warfare Two, Pokemon Emerald, Final Fantasy Seven, and Kingdom Hearts Two Final Mix, and. Uh, in another narrow defeat, an unjust defeat in my mind, Sam won. It brings the total to Sam winning with a score of 3-1 one, and 1. Go team. So, we have our initiative dice. Do you want to roll for the category? Sure. Let's do that. Oh, I just threw it at you. Yep. So, uh, that was a 5. Oh, we're just, are we going with that? We're going with that. We're going with that. All right. 5 Ooh. is anime. Oof. Okay. That'll be... That I, do I know five anime? I know five anime. I, I hope I know. I, I definitely know more than five anime. I feel like I've watched a ton. I've but definitely can I watched But can I think of them ton. right now? Yeah. That's the problem. All right. Roll All right. for initiative. 18. 18. <laughs> Rollies. Rollies. Four. 19. Damn. All right. This, this, Sam first. All right. First overall pick. Ooh, first overall pick. <laughs> um, ooh, God. Just so many. Just so many options. Uh, I'm going to go with the one that came first to my mind, and uh, it's the one I've actually... Uh, we were watching together ah, last year this yeah. time, Attack on Titan. That's a good one. That's a pretty epic one. That is a very good, very good anime. Uh, the most recent season, very World War II. <laughs> very Nazi Germany influence yeah. uh, there. Not that not that the show, like, is in, like it's the bad guys. Yeah. All right, like, they're, it's fine. So it won't um, affect Connie's legacy. Attack on Attack on Titan is a phenomenal anime, and highly, highly recommend anyone watch it. Anyone watch it. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, if you don't like gore, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe watch not. us. So but it is very good. Very with, good. With my first overall pick, I'm going with one of the big three. The I biggest. Kind of, I kind of suspected you would. The biggest of the big three, and that is Naruto. The do we want to specify between Naruto original run and Naruto Shippuden? Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll I'm just going to put Naruto. Just put Naruto. If you wanted to add Boruto, though. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I, Boruto's I, not making this I'd list. I'd be very, I'd be very surprised if you did. <laughs> Boruto's not going to make this list. But Naruto, in a, I'll, I'll talk more about the original run because that's where my true nostalgia lies. I mean, it, it was the anime that got people into anime. It was mm. on Toonami after in the late night hours on Cartoon Network mm. uh, when they would show things such as Naruto, Bleach, uh, uh, Samurai Jack, that kind of stuff. And and the original the original arc in Naruto, the Zabuza arc, classic, very influential, and then amazing arcs, the Chunin exams, Sasuke retrieval, amazing amazing arcs, Naruto. The anime, the anime, the one of the quintessentials. One of the, yeah, it 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 belongs in the Hall of Fame on the Mount Rushmore of anime. It is, as you mentioned, one of the big three. Of course, Samuel. Yes, moving on. Um, actually, surprisingly, I've ne- well, okay, I've watched sixty episodes of One Piece, and that's it. Wow. Uh, I'm not. I've never watched the big three One really. Piece. And yeah, that. Uh, if you want to watch One Piece, uh, you need to watch it at least on a clip of ten episodes a day just to catch up. <laughs> there's a there's a fan project where they're chopping every episode in and like all those long extended just ah ha, yeah. chopping those down and it takes like what twenty minute episodes down mm-hmm. to like ten and they're just like the good they're, yeah it's the parts that are that are necessary to be there to understand the show there are there are also wikipedias that are completely dedicated to shows like long-running shows like naruto and one piece that chop out 
anything that isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. Like episodes that are like mostly flashbacks, gone. Episodes that are just not pertinent to the plot in any way, gone. Filler, gone. Everything. And highly recommend that be the way you watch. That's how I ended up uh, catching up to Naruto Shippuden Mm. when I was in high school was I chopped out all the filler arc nonsense. So one piece, a a classic. Uh, Difficult to get into. Yeah, very difficult. It's 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 a lot. I watched it a little bit on That's tsunami why as a, making it accessible. Yeah, watched it a little bit on tsunami as a young child. It's as a wee lad. It it was it was rough. It was rough <laughs> to get into in the early days. Anyway, second overall pick. You mentioned the power up sequence. And what um, anime made famous the long yelling power up sequence? And that would be the Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z, an anime. I'm not fond of personally. I've never actually watched it. I it when I did watch it, I was I was underwhelmed to say the least, and that might offend some people, and I'm okay with that because, well, fuck you. It's my podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and it's and, my and, team. Now, does that mean I don't respect the Dragon Ball Z? Of course, I respect the Dragon Ball Z. It has my number two pick. Mm-hmm, obviously. One one of the most influential animes, and in fact, one of the animes that people that do not watch anime. Many men that don't watch anime have seen Dragon Ball Z true. and know and respect the Dragon Ball Z. So I put some respect on its name. Number two overall pick. Number two. Nice. Uh, my number three is going to be actually one of the first that I watched, which was Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal but I Alchemist. would like the Colon Brotherhood on in there. Brother, oh, we're going with the Brotherhood specifically. Yes, because the Brotherhood uh, follows more closely to the manga. Interesting. And uh, is just overall mm-hmm. more. Interesting. More. Interesting. Not uh, that the original is bad by any means. I've, I've only heard good things about Full Metal Alchemist, and I know some memes surrounding mm-hmm. it, specifically the, the daughter dog yeah. thing. Um, but I, never, never an anime that I've partaken in, personally. So it's all right. The Full Metal Alchemist, I respect. The number three overall pick for my team. I'm going back to a classic, one that might ruffles ruffle some feathers a little bit by classifying it as an anime. But I mean, this is because it was a Saturday morning cartoon for mm. many people. But it is an anime, and that is the Pokemon. Ah, uh, that was going to be that was going to be one of my picks as well. The Pokemon Indigo League Pokemon is the original run. Misty, Brock, the like, yes. Gary. Being a little cunt. Gary. A little cunt Gary. <laughs> a classic. A classic. The the story arc of Ash Ketchum now in as of recording this beginning it's come to a close. Yes. As in the most recent arc of uh the Pokemon series, it was basically a championship league that Ash finally won the world championship and is the greatest Pokemon master of them all. At last. And there's going to be a brief eleven episode run that is Tying a bow and ending Ash and Pikachu's story and Pokemon going forward after that with the Scarlet and Violet series that will come out. We'll have a new protagonist and a new partner Pokemon Mm -hmm. for the first time. First time. And put the respect on the name. For the very first time. Yes. Yes. Like a verb. Also, apparently, apparently, um, Ash is going to reunite with his uh, Bye Bye Butterfreed (gasps) at some point. In the last few episodes, I mean, which who, is who among adorable, us didn't cry in that that episode. Absolutely adorable. Sam, number four pick. Ooh, number four pick. Okay, um, I've got my number five pick in my head, and I don't want to use that as my number four pick, <laughs> um, because as we often talk about, the head sense versus the heart sense. That of course, is, that is of a, course, that's a heart sense. Um, of course. Shoot. Uh, um. <sighs> I guess I guess if we're on the Saturday morning cartoon mm-hmm. streak, um, what is more influential as uh, as uh, Yu Gi Oh? Yu Gi Oh. Yu Gi Oh. Interesting. Interesting. Very anime. Very anime. It, it it it's one of the most anime anime that you can come across. Um, <laughs> this isn't even a quote from the anime. Oh, my blue eyes. Yes. A, a, class, a classic Rooster Teeth podcast bit of... Oh, my God. I, I can't even. I can't no, even. but uh, the, the, we quote it. We quote Yu-Gi-Oh! And, the, and mm-hmm. actually, we quote all of these uh, uh, and the abridged series just yeah. as much. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, the Attack on Titan abridged, even though it's like only half of the first season that ever got made. 
highly recommend <laughs> highly recommend uh but yes of course the Yu-Gi-Oh! very influential in my youth as well uh the battle city arc oh yeah by far i think the best of them all i mean in my mind. i i i will always have the nostalgia for the uh uh the island yeah the, the yes the original island uh with pegasus with pegasus was, was having cl- stolen Yugi's grandpa's soul. Yeah. So Battle City, to me, I feel like they ironed out a lot of the weird, like, they're breaking the rules every duel kind of <laughs> thing. And there was a little bit less of that. And the rule breaking that did happen was like, all right, you're not, like, infinitely cloning Karibo to, like, right. defend yourself. You're, like, actually kind of playing into the rules of the cards a little bit. Um, pulling pulling stuff out of your ass with a brand new card that no one's ever seen before. But, right. Uh, the Egyptian God cards, uh, the dual disc in oh, and of yeah. itself. I mean, but we can't we can't move on before we mention the best mini arc that is better than the whole show. <gasps> uh, better than the entire run of Yu Gi Oh. The Dungeon Dice Monsters. Dungeon Dice Monsters. If you if you had, I had that fucking game. I had the actual real world Dungeon Dice Monsters game, and it, it when when my mom when my mom passed, and we had to sell the house and like get rid of everything. At some point in there, it was gone. Yeah, and I'm so pissed because that game was. Ooh boy, the Dungeon Dice Monsters. How that didn't have its own actual run spin-off is beyond me because that was an awesome little right. mini arc within the Duel City. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um so we've we've we're appealing very much to the male audience with this so far. I mean, we don't know much else, so now this this anime is a newer one, mm. very somber, very sad very 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 good and respects your time all of these series so far are long running ongoing series it's true this is an anime that is one season it has its self contained story and it's done and it respects your time and I respect it for that if you're into music Your Lie in April Mm. Your Lie in April is very sad you're looking to cry you're looking to cry Uh, the animation is phenomenal um, the the story marvelous. Uh, a depressed depressed boy with mommy issues overcoming a very musical prodigy overcoming himself with the help of a very outgoing, bright, loving girl that was inspired by him at a young age. It's a whole it. It's so good. Highly highly recommend if you're looking for a cry. There you go. Perfect perfect anime. Sam, with your last this fifth pick of the anime draft yes the heart uh often oftentimes we attribute to the heart sense pick um uh, not for everyone by any means <laughs> and uh the people suspect things about me that probably aren't true probably yeah jojo's bizarre adventure jojo jojo but a jojo but yeah i started watching that randomly a couple years ago and uh, turns out a lot of my, my high school friend group that I still hang out with was like, you watch it too? Wait, I watch it too. Wait, you yeah. watch it too? And it's yeah. like, but it's like the internet hates JoJo's. Really? I find I, there's a lot of JoJo hate on the internet. I not come across that. Then again, I haven't watched it. Jo- JoJo is like the big, uh, the big blank spot in in my anime knowledge mm-hmm. like that's the one that i would want to fill in first because i i see clips and i'm like that's fucking ridiculous <laughs> it's, it's it's great it's ludicrous um a great a great fifth pick a great fifth pick now is it a little bit late in the draft to be asking this rules committee question yes but are we accepting the anime movies Ooh. um as a, or are we going strictly shows here um, you, let, you can go for it. And I'll say allow. Let's allow it. Ooh, ooh! But I just thought of another one that I that's a cl- ooh. All right, odds, odds on the die roll. I go with the show that I had in mind, and evens. I go with the movie that okay. I had in mind. That is Even. a two. Uh, we'll go with Akira. Akira. Okay. Akira, a classic. Now. You might be thinking, Connor, was this a head sense or a heart sense? This was 100% a head sense. I am down. I'm, I'm one, three, and one right now. I need to get my numbers <laughs> up. Akira, a classic anime film. Uh, one of the great anime posters of all time with the motorcycle and the streak. A uh, very classic. Um, 
I will. I do want to point out that the other option that I was going to go for, but I am not going to be drafting, is the Cowboy Bebop. Oh, Cowboy Bebop. A, a classic. Could have, space could have and should have ended up on one of these lists just by its influence and popularity alone. But alas, these are our lists. These are our teams. And fuck you. Also, go make your own if you're really into yes, this. Yes, please, please do make your own. Please do make your own. Let us know who you would pick. Of course. Now, if you want to vote on which one of ours is better, you can go to our Instagram where in a week's time we will have a story up where you can vote on who has the better list, the better drafted team. Mm. of anime the final teams of course for sam attack on titan one piece full metal alchemist brotherhood Yu-Gi-Oh! and jojo's bizarre adventure my team being naruto dragon ball z pokemon your lion april and akira good lists good lists. i think these are our best lists so far i could see this going either way i i feel like in the past we've often struggled to come up with the ones that we think are like really good or agree on them these ones were all like oh yeah that one's a re- yeah, oh yeah, yeah definitely yeah. oh that one and we, and we were worried we wouldn't be able to come up with five good ones each. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Um, we don't normally do this, but Sam, is there, any, is there any animes that have been shouted out in the TikTok Live chat? There have not been. We don't have very many people watching right now, but... Uh, well, that's unfortunate. That's okay. That's fine. We got, we got news. We got news. We got, we got news. <laughs> we, got, we have news, that's for sure, but... Um, I mean, let's. I mean, let's just let's just jump right just in. Jump right Sam, in. Sam's got the first story from All Kotaku. Right. Yes, uh, this is the tragedy of the Wo- Wizards of the Coast fireside chat, um, and the related article: Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, D and D one, uh, one D and D. Asking us all, should D and D be more monetized? Well. Uh, about two weeks ago now, D and, uh, Wizards of the Coast um, and Hasbro CEO Chris Cox and the Wizards of the Coast president Cynthia Williams and then a compliance person, Debbie, I don't remember her last name. Debbie something or other. Debbie something or other. Uh, went on an interview and did a quote unquote fireside chat, which could have been actually <laughs> called an investors meeting. Because uh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Fireside chats are supposed to be where the, the heads of something, such as the president of the United States, FDR, talks to the common people about the problems and the things that they're thinking of doing in the government. Um, the, the meeting started out with them rehashing just what Magic the Gathering was by reading the Wikipedia article, and kind of giving their corporate strap recap, um, and the fact that Magic just hit its 30th year. What is on her back? Oh, that's your... Anyway. <laughs> the, bean, the, bean, the bean was making noise, so I have acquired her. Very good. Um, most of this was just, to re- was just to reassure the investors that Magic was still growing and still profitable. Uh, some of the interesting things that are not... Um, the, some of the positive interesting things... Um, maybe... Our uh, folk emphasis on maybe the there will be a focus on uh, new universes beyond in the coming years uh, to pull in new players from other fandoms. Um, of course, we knew things like Assassin's Creed. They just did Transformers, um, and Lord Warhammer, of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, out. and they Doctor also Who. Uh, Doctor Who. They might have they might have accidentally leaked that there might be a Harry Potter Beyond universe, <sighs> universe Beyond. Um, the other uh, Xbox will be getting um, Magic Arenas, and uh, uh, Lord of the Rings will be the first universes beyond to be to go on to Magic Arenas. Which for me, <laughs> now I have even more money I need to spend. <laughs> if you're unaware, uh, Lord of the Rings is a Connor's jam. Uh, yeah, yes. To say the least. To say the least. I'm one of the staunchest Rings of Power defenders. That show is good. I I refuse I refuse I refuse to believe anyone that's like that show is complete garbage and it's it stomps on everything that J.R.R. Tolkien believed. I'm like, no, you're wrong. Carry on, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um And then there were some things that again, if you didn't want the common man, as in us, other podcasters, other very popular YouTube channels. Yes, people to, people with the rarity color of black. Yes. Common. To <laughs> hop into... If you don't get that, you don't play Magic the Gathering. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and that's fine. That's totally fine. 
Play, play what you want. want. It's common. Play what you want. Uh, anyway. Um, rarity color. color. Yes. Uh, uh, you, then you shouldn't have called it a fireside chat and called it investors meetings. Well, we're less interested in those. But uh, some things they did touch on were the fact that uh, they had a lot of releases come in at the end of the year. Um, Dominary United, Unfinity, Warhammer, uh, uh, the 30th anniversary, two jump starts, and uh, the core commander sets all dropped within three months of each other. Yep. Plus, uh, there were like, what, 10 secret layer drops in that time as well? Mm -hmm. They said that was not the plan, but they blamed the uh, supply chain issues for uh, set related releases. Which, yes, we went through a we'll little get, pandemic. We'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Um, other things, they were not concerned about the pricing of their cards. They said that they have really no issue or no interest in dropping the prices and that the way they wish to grow is by bringing in new fans. Um, they also asserted that there were no, the, that the claims of uh, overprinting are backed by zero evidence. And that uh, assessing the secondary market is useless and doesn't reflect Watsy or Hasbro's actions. Um, real quick. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. Okay, real quick. Uh, the meeting did end. They wanted to talk about D&D. &D, and that's kind of where uh, the article comes in. D&D &D CEO thinks the hobby is under-monetized compared to video games. Oh, my God. I can't. Uh, it's... So, as we know, earlier this year, uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro acquired the digital platform, D&D Beyond, and are making it their central location for all future D&D-centric uh, online media, which will include you know, exclusive content, as well as uh, uh, when you buy physical copies, you can also get digital copies. Mm -hmm. um, they pointed out that, most, that the most spending comes from uh, dungeon masters and as you would expect as you would expect and especially since there's the ability to for a dungeon master to buy it buy a book and then share it with their party um and so 30 to 60 dollars would get somebody online today the core rule books easily mm -hmm. and then they can stop spending as well, as we all know that isn't how that happens no it's not and Wizards of the Coast isn't doesn't like that. It's, well, at least the CEOs and presidents don't. How dare they be frugal? <laughs> um, but with the release, uh, the upcoming release of One D and D next year in twenty twenty. Well, actually, still two years away in twenty twenty four. Pardon me. And um, the integration of D and D Beyond, they hope to change. A regularly a regular book release schedule into a recurring spending environment. That's a lot of information right there. Well, okay. We'll tackle D and D here in a second. Yeah, let's I wanna I wanna D &D. round back to the Magic the Gathering stuff yeah, here let's personally. Magic the Gathering. The the twofold. First, the whole coronavirus impact obviously impacting creation of products and shipping and all that stuff. If it were impacting them negatively, they would be shipping less, not more. Mm. Their their complaint of, oh, things were delayed and now things are like jammed together. It's like, no, you can just push things back. You didn't you didn't jam everything into 2020 because of coronavirus problems. You jammed everything into 2020 because you want to sell more product. Yeah. It's 2022 by the way. 2022. My my <laughs> my point stands. Yes, your point stands. Um, and 2021 wasn't like devoid of Magic the Gathering content either. It had like a slightly above average number of releases, which has historically been four core releases, one each quarter, and has moved up drastically in the last two years. Then we get to the overprinting thing, that there's no evidence of overprinting, and I believe they cite specifically that their most of their orders are pretty much print to demand yep. so whatever the demand is they print an, a number of boxes and cards and s of all in various printing runs yeah they're still printing uh warhammer to because they, there's yeah. still demand for warhammer yes to satiate the demand no one is saying 
that they can't buy the products that they want mm -hmm. or that there's so much like, oh my gosh, there's way too much Dominaria United and everywhere everything's flooded with Dominaria United. No one's fucking saying that. They're saying they're releasing too many product lines and overprinting as in creating too many new cards. Yeah. If you look in the past, new we'll, we'll just use i know i've i've watched uh commander's quarters on youtube and he's talked about this the number of legendary creatures that they released in previous years we go back to like 2016 it was like 80 mm -hmm. which is like one every couple days they're releasing more new legendary creatures more new commanders for the most popular game format of commander in magic the gathering new commanders at a clip of more than one per day obviously they're not releasing one every day they're dropping like 40 at a time right but more than one per day you could make a he's used this example he said he could make a youtube video every single day all year on every legendary creature that they release and he would not be able to keep up with it every year that's a problem they're printing more legendary creatures because more people are playing commander and they want more interesting commander options for people. But you can just make interesting commander options in your regular release of cards. You don't need to add an additional like four sets a year. You don't need to add an additional like Innistrad double feature that's just the two sets combined in black and white. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have a secret layer drop multiple times every month. I believe there were 55 secret layer drops this year. That is ungodly. And they used to be maybe one a month? Maybe one a year. Yeah. Like one a quarter. And I get it. They're, they're, they're doing some cool things. Well, they're doing some interesting things where they release... Yeah, they do special artist in, um, um, releases, and which it's, if you like those artists, yeah, absolutely. Totally fine. They're collector's items. But do we need a monthly horoscope secret layer drop? Yeah. Do we need... Do we need multiple full art land secret lair drops that are just one fucking copy of the land each? And they're costing more than a regular secret lair drop. You can't, you can't, you can't, like, you can't get a play set of the cool full art lands without spending, like, a thousand dollars. If you're gonna, like, that, that's the one that pisses me off the most. It's like, here are these amazing full art lands. I would happily pay, like, 30 40 bucks for mm -hmm. an amazing full art land set of like 20 of each of the lands yeah i would happily do that but that's not what they do no they give you one copy of each so if you want even just a play set no one needs a play set of basic lands you need a lot more than that so four copies of each is like 300 400 bucks yeah it's ungodly and, and that's not even to get into the fucking D, &D comments yet no and 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 yeah so all of all of that alone um and and then we were kind of talking about this before the podcast uh uh they made a comment that um assessing the secondary market is useless and doesn't reflect uh watsi's actions which uh we wanted to make the, the note that yes wizards of the coast is never sh shouldn't be looking at the second market and being like "Ooh, how do we how do profit we, off how of do we profit off of this because they're the primary market but to say that people can't look at the secondary market and determine the a health. lot about the health of the game and the community from that, that uh, they basically said the sentiment is a gross uh, misunderstanding of our business, kind of calling us all stupid. Yeah. Now, the whole reason for this investor meeting clearly comes off the, the heels of the Bank of America analyst saying that Magic the Gathering is vastly overprinted and that is going to negatively affect Hasbro as a company in the coming year. This is clearly an attempt by them to be like, no, look, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. We're totally good. There's no evidence to support this, blah, 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 to their investors so that they don't lose a lot of money from investors. It's clear that they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth. Yeah. And it's clear that their s supposed solution is now more monetizing. Not maybe we should reel back our releases and make them quality and worth the money that people are going to spend on it. Mm -hmm. And now this is clearly going into Dungeons and Dragons as well. Quote, under monetized compared to video games. Are we going to live in a world where the player's handbook 
every quarter is going to have a ten dollar patch. Like, oh, we we've added we've added two new subclasses and we've fixed balancing for like twelve other ones that are already there. If you want to be current on D and D, you need to give us another ten dollars. <laughs> what they want is there is they want you to subscribe. Yeah, they're gonna have a subscription of some sort. I believe we originally saw that when they purchased D and D Beyond. I'm which, which for D and D Beyond, a subscription service where you just get access to everything they have. I think that could be a very worthwhile deal, especially when they're clearly intent on releasing more and more shit constantly. Mm-hmm. Just having access to everything and not having to worry about have I bought this book? Do and. But then we get into the whole, are you going to be able to share it with your players thing? Are they going to enable that functionality still? Or are you going to have to buy it a la carte if you want to share it with your players? It's clear, they, as they talked about in, in their investor meeting, how the vast majority of spending is done by Dungeon Masters, mm-hmm. which you would expect. They're the ones that would buy terrain from them, that buy the campaign books, that Monster buy books. supplements. They're the ones that buy collector's editions. They're the ones that buy miniatures from WizKids that are in partnership with Wizards of the Coast. Um, they're the ones that would buy stuff on D&D Beyond to then distribute to their players with the sharing feature. Mm-hmm. And then players tend to just buy the core rule books and nothing else. I don't I, I fail to see how that's under monetized. You make a book, you print a book, you sell the book for like forty bucks. Yeah, that's how that's how books have been made and sold since books. Like under monetized, they're not. Give, it's not. It, this isn't fucking Fortnite. I was going to say, I think the, the comment that they're under the uh, under monetized compared to video games is a gross misunderstanding of how the gaming market works. It's not a video game. It's not. There are video games of it. Using IP in Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. There, there's Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be released, a uh, uh, final release in, ne- or, or, in uh, the summer. I believe so. But when you sit down to play D and D at the table, you're you're not sitting down to the same way you'd sit down to play a video game. Mm-hmm. And uh uh and 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 yeah uh, uh, uh Charles Smith or uh Charles Smith Org points out they they want to change the market. Yeah. They want to continue to grow and we saw this, we talked about this in previous podcasts. Uh they have interests the hasbro's investor meeting this year stated that they want to grow however much percent they grew so they in the past three years they've grown however much percent and it was a ridiculous amount they want to continue that trend except they want to accelerate that timeline yeah and one uh, one last thing to tie this up here, with a bow. to tie this up before we lead into the next that because this very much leads into the next story you remember the virtual tabletop that they want to implement? Mm, I do. That's a video game. And they want to monetize that like a video game. And they see how, how like the money printing that you get from Fortnite, from Apex Legends, from Call of Duty. They print money. Yeah. And they're free to play games. They are. Well, specifically Warzone for Call of Duty. That's not, true. Not the core releases. But even then... They print money because of things like Battle Pass and cosmetics. And you know what? If their virtual tabletop is really, really good and free to play and has a core suite of features that are available for free and has a tie-in that when you buy the book, you can redeem a digital code to get the contents of the book, but then has this vast marketplace of things that you can buy cosmetic a la carte things, I bet that could print money. Mm -hmm. And I'm all in favor of them doing that. A free-to-play virtual tabletop, maybe even with a VR support, that'd be fucking cool. But a 3D virtual tabletop that has this suite of features available to you for free, much like Roll20. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, it'd be a lot better than Roll20 because it's 3D and Unreal Engine and all that stuff. And then having being having that connection with the books and being able to get... Because I already talked about wanting to have book-specific things in 3D models. That is a very good monetization scheme for them that I would also argue is still good for the consumer. 
you're buying the book and you're getting the digital assets for that book to use on their free virtual tabletop. What I'm concerned of is that's not how it's going to work. They've already said they want to give you, let me, let me backtrack here. I'm pretty sure their wording specifically says they want to have specific 3D assets for each book. And they may have said included. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since we looked at it. It's been a while. But my worry is this is going to be a $70 game that you have to buy. And then, it, oh, we have the we ha- the next Forgotten Realms, whatever the, whatever the next Sword Coast book is. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, you buy the book. Well, it's going it's going to come with a digital code for D&D Beyond. We already know that for one D&D releases, so you're going to have the digital copy. So you'll have access to the rules and all that stuff in the virtual tabletop environment. But if you want the 3D assets to come along with it, it's going to cost you another $10. Oh, and then we have this other this other thing that isn't included in the Forgotten Realms book because it's not strictly part of the campaign that we've made with this, but it's a, but it's part of the city that would help ma- like flesh it out and help you with a lot of side stuff. That's going to be another $10. And oh, do you want access to this new race that we have coming out? Do you like we have a new variant of the Ardling or we have the ASMR finally? Oh yeah, that's going to cost another $5 to get this access of like five minis that are associated with them. Oh, but do you want different poses for these minis? That's going to cost 99 cents for that pose and 99 and so so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. That seems like the route they want to go. And that's just with the fucking virtual tabletop. Yeah. It, this is a slippery fl- fucking slope. And it's clear that they just want to say, investors, look, we're going to make a lot more money. And we want to make more money. And it'll be fine. Even though things are clearly, clearly not fine. Sam, do you have comments from the TikTok Yeah, we live? do. Uh, Kat... And Mice uh, says it is ridiculous. I think it is ridiculous that they want to scavenge for every dime, but massively let down customers with bare bones writing for things we pay so much for. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh my they, gosh. Yeah. They keep we we we're big proponents of they need to stop producing so many things so they can actually make good, rich products. Mm-hmm. Even if you look at like Spelljammers, which had its own little controversy, but like the books themselves are very thin. They are compared to say Strixhaven, which is like a normal size D and D book. It's a, I think, a slightly larger than the player's handbook. That's a normal size D and D book. And then things like the Sword Coast Adventures Guide that's been around for a while, but that one's really thin. The Spelljammer books are all that thin, mm-hmm. including the fucking campaign module. Yeah, and and the thing is, again, we didn't have time to revel in. The spe- what Spelljammer was supposed to be. There were so many things early in the year where it's like Spelljammer's coming out. It was the big. It was the big announcement in April. Yeah. Uh, with with their April Fool's Day being boo floating across the screen. Yeah. And and there were so many shows and so many. Uh, they were very popular creators talking mm-hmm. about this. We can't wait to get into this. We're gonna have so many things. Haven't heard anything. Yeah. And then just now, this month, Dragonlance. Dragonlance. Not even two months after. Yeah. And Dragonlance out. Big fanfare. People were excited. Oh my gosh, Dragonlance is going to be a D&D setting. Again. It's out now. We missed the release. We missed it. Uh, but a lot of other people missed it. Yeah. Anyway. Charles <laughs> Smith Org says, Is Watsi threatened by small indie uh, producers? Produce, uh, producers who can't match a big online presence? Um possibly possibly i mean they've sent plenty of cease and desists to different creators and different um producers of like magic proxies oh my gosh yeah they they shut down they shut down the biggest magic the gathering proxy card creator site with a cease and desist immediately after selling magic 30th like, oh, you think it's ridiculous to, se- to for us to sell thousand dollar proxies? Uh, now you can't make proxies. It's shit like that that created the next story, the hashtag Open D and D trend on Twitter. Let's hit that. We've we talked we talked previously about the OGL and how people are upset that. Wizards of the Coast doesn't seem to be guaranteeing that there's going to be an open gaming license for 1D&D, which means people like MCDM, 
uh, ourselves, any third party D and D creator, Matt Mercer is not going to be able to post anything on D and D beyond or I, well, the DMs guild, Mm -hmm. like he wouldn't be able to post the fucking blood hunter, you know? And people are worried that they're not going to have a license to be able to create third party content that is compatible with one D and D. Now, Wizards of the Coast did give a statement kind of skirting around the answer being like, we're still early in development of 1D&D and we're working on what the next OGL might be. Mm -hmm. That has not helped. And the hashtag open 1D&D hashtag was trending on Twitter as more and more content creators are, are... just getting more and more concerned because we're not getting a straight answer even with the and even more so with the quote-unquote fireside chat that is the investors meeting that just happened people are even more concerned that D is not going to be a for the player game anymore and it's going to be a for the company game mm-hmm. most of this trend of hashtag open D is people wanting Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast to ensure an OGL that will allow them to create and use third-party content with D&D, specifically not shutting down things like Drive Through RPG yeah. and the DMs Guild. <laughs> Who they already make money off of anyway. Which they already, they already make money off of the DMs Guild. But without an OGL, the DMs Guild would be the only place you could do homebrew stuff and sell it, assuming that they'd even let you sell it at all. Mm-hmm. You might be able to sell it and they'll take a 90% cut. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what the cut scheme would be. Right now, I think it's 50-50. I think it's 60-40 for, in favor of you on drive through RPG. But it's a, whole, it's a whole mess. And most people now, including some large creators on TikTok and YouTube and other apps and social media, are threatening that if there isn't an OGL... They'll move to another RPG system, which, I mean, that'd be catastrophic for us. We're the fucking Dungeon Bros. <laughs> Somebody else has uh, got a dungeon Path- in the name of their uh, the Pathfinder Bros. TTRPG. Don't don't they just roll off the tongue quite as well as the Dungeon Bros. Does. No, no. People already ship us really hard on the internet. Um, mm-hmm. Pathfinder Bros. kind of sounds like uh, we'd be shipped even harder. Yeah, that 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 sound that I, I get. Um, I get like some uh, Brokeback Mountain vibes from from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which we're not saying. We're not. We're nothing wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with that. That's just not us. That's just. That ain't me. We are not. We are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon, and nor are we uh, in a romantic relationship. Nope. Financial relationship, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we pay half each other's bills. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, hashtag Open D and D. What do you think? Um. Uh, it, <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Very good job, Bean. I think there's been a lot of things over the past year in particular that I've seen. Maybe it's just because we're doing more as a as podcast, you know, as podcasters where we look at the news every week. Maybe it's because we're doing more because um, we're on social media more these days. But I feel like this is the year that I've realized a lot of let's say, agree- more egregious things that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro have done. Mm-hmm. That being said, I do think that in 2024, if you know, 1D&D comes out and they're like, hey, guess what? No, no, no open gaming license, no SRD. Uh, I think that will kind of finally be one of those nails in the coffin that drives a vast majority of, uh, or a large portion of players away. Mm-hmm. And and like we were saying, the content creators specifically, because if I can't produce things like my, you know, our community, not ours in particular, we're not that big yet, but there's a lot of communities that are like, well, that's what they go to this creator for is yeah. content, uh, you know, is written content, is things that they can put into their D and D games. It's part of the reason why Matt Colville is so popular. Yeah, he creates a lot of good stuff, really good stuff. <laughs> and it's like, well, if now he's creating stuff for maybe his own TTRPG. Well, that's going to pull a lot of audience away. Like, not that you can't play multiple TTRPGs, but if you're going to invest your time into another system, then you're going to then Wizards of the Coast is not going to get your money. Yeah. I mean, this is all still up in the air. We don't know what they're planning to do. 
And we're not going to know until we get closer to the release of 1D&D. 2024. So all of this is just rumors and theory crafting. But seeing their trend of how they've been treating Magic the Gathering and how they've been talking about Dungeons and Dragons, there's a lot of concern. Mm-hmm. And guess what? When if people, a lot of people leave D and D for another TTRPG system, it's oh, we should have monetized it better. Oh, that's yeah. that's the problem. We should have monetized it differently. We should have we should have taken those lemons that are the people. We yeah. we we'd be totally fine if we charged one hundred and twenty dollars for court rule books. That would have been fine. It would have been totally fine. We could have sustained all the loss of players. As as we're talking about this, I was kind of <laughs> thinking about this. We want to. We should. We should. Once again, make the differentiation. The people who work for Wizards of the Coast at the hour level, at the common rarity level, they're fine people. E- even the uncommon, <laughs> even the uncommon level. Those that want, that are making, that are writing these r- new rules and are, yeah. are making content, they're they're lovely people, I'm sure. And they all the have designers their... of One D and D clearly care about the product. The people who are above them, the yes. people who make decisions. As somebody who's who's been working in a corporate structure for a couple years now, um, it fucking sucks. It sucks. Yeah, there are these people way at the top that say we're going to do this, and the people below them say okay. that's a ba- that's a bad idea. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. And then there are people below them that go to the people above them and say, "Hey, we think this is a bad idea," and they get told it's not our place. Do it anyway. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, I, I had more of a rant for this the last podcast than I do now. I, there's so much that has happened, and it's clearly not gained traction, so wonderful. But uh, there's been these uh, horrific click farming websites, such as the Montreal Gazette, that have just been the worst headlines imaginable. This, fans of Dungeons & Dragons exposed as owners of pro-war social media platform. They have published information on the positions of Ukrainian military forces and boasted the Russian army uses its data for missile strikes, according to a, quote, news outlet. The first sentence, two fans of the Dungeons and Dragons fantasy game have been unmasked as the owners of an influential social media channel linked to Russian spies and mercenaries. The Bell, a Russian opposition news group, calls the Rybar Telegram channel a, quote, direct player in the Kremlin's information war, influencing Western media and providing real-time battle analysis for 1.1 million subscribers. The fact that they are fans of Dungeons & Dragons has nothing to do with the fact that they own pro-Russian war propaganda social media channels. The fact that their aliases have to do with D&D characters that they play has nothing to do with the fact that they're pieces of shit. And the fact that your headline and opening line name them not as the individual's Not as the organization, but as fans of D&D, implying that somehow D&D and TTRPGs somehow lead or allow people to be pro-war extremists in favor of the Russian government is fucked up and irresponsible and clearly just an attempt to get people like me riled up and read their articles to talk about how fucking stupid it is because it is. I don't have much more to say. I don't want to talk about it more. That's all we got to say about that. Let's go on to a little bit of positive, positive news. Positive news. Um, positive. Yes. Therapists are now prescribing D&D as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, just prescribing D&D. Legit mental health booster. Legit mental health booster as uh, almost one in four Americans take ment- uh, medication for the, for their mental health, according to the CDC. Um, and a lot of people don't like to take me- uh, medication. Just fine. Do what you want. But we all have day-to-day issues, struggles, and stress is in our life. Uh, I mean, look at this cat. She shits on the floor multiple times a day. Yes. Jester, be better. Drives me crazy. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, in this, uh, this article, it talks about Anthony Bean, a therapist and founder of Geek Therapeutics, uh, played D&D while he was pursuing his master's degree. 
And he realized that he and his friends were using D&D uh, to process things that were going on in their real life. Uh, if uh, After a bad day, he and his friends would ask what their character would do in that situation. Uh, it, it eventually uh, moved on to where they were using it with their clients. Um, and now, Geek Therapeutics, along with a handful of other organizations... Uh, trains therapists to help clients explore their issues while casting spells and battling dragons. Um, it, uh, it, it is quoted as saying, or uh, Ra- uh, Raphael Bocamazzo uh, is quoted as saying, it's e- way easier for me to go in and engage in a process that I find enjoyable, as opposed to going into somebody's office knowing I'm going to talk about something very painful, very difficult things directly. Um the the role playing game is an effective way of building social skills and working with those on the autism spectrum, po- processing past trauma and exploring issues around ge- gender and sexuality. Um, obviously, as we know, as two 28 year old men, well, 27, 28 year old men sitting here talking about D and D, it's not just for kids. It's not just for teens. It's also for adults. This isn't tricks cereal. No, that's just for kids. They go I on here. To- Am I am I correct that this cereal is exclusively for children? Tricks for kids. That is a uh, that is a Ted movie reference with Liam Neeson doing a taken bit about tricks the cereal. Anyway, just to wrap this up, um, Bean points out that even Bean. if you don't want to Bean. learn to play D anD D or another TTRPG, uh, just Having hobbies is a good way to help maintain your mental health. It helps us, and they help us to be more, to be happier, more resilient, and even more successful at work. Now, I love, uh, I completely agree. Completely agree. D&D is a net positive on mental health across the board, I would argue. And there, I feel like there's no better real world representation of this than D and D TikTok. <laughs> if, if you've spent any amount of time on D and D TikTok, I we love we love you, and a lot of them are our friends, including ourselves. Mentally struggling people, oftentimes on, yes, often on often mentally struggling people on the D and D TikToks, ourselves included. <laughs> I've barely posted a new video in the past like two weeks. Yeah, so. A lot of repos on our channel. And, uh, uh, I feel you. I feel it. Not for lack of having content made. Just. It's been rough. It's been a, it's been a time. Now, I have a question. I, what am I supposed to do with the stress that comes from being unable to schedule a D&D session? Um, get some dice links. Pre-order some dice links. Pre-order some dice links. <laughs> your little transforming your, your dice monsters. To Hasbro. Yeah. Yeah. Give more money to Hasbro. That'll solve all your problems. But. If you if you have any problems, reach out to a friend, play some D and D, or you know contact an actual medical professional. Um, and check out Geek Therapeutics, apparently. Yes, Geek Therapeutics, or uh, follow us on TikTok for whimsical content surrounding we'll distract this game that hours. we all love. This game that we all love. Yes. Speaking of this game we all love, what wrap up time? Wrap up some stuff. D and D Honor Among Thieves. We've talked about the prequel books that are uh, that were announced, but we have some specifics. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves: The Road to Neverwinter is available for pre-order for twenty nine ninety nine, and will we release on February twenty eighth? The other one, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves: The Druid's Call. You can pre-order a Kindle and hardcover version for ten ninety nine and nineteen ninety nine, respectively. Also releasing on February twenty eighth. Of course, this came around. The announcement of these books came around the same time of the announcement of the Dicelings that we just alluded to. <laughs> Very cute. The Dicelings, you can get the entire set for $13.99 each. You get free shipping if you use, if you order more than $40 and use a code on Entertainment Earth, apparently. Cool. So, Don't know who those are. Good for them. But yeah, the prequel books coming out. Uh, can I also do the next yeah, one? Yeah, do the next one. I want to do the next two. one, too. Because Dungeons & Dragons, the 80s television cartoon D&D, is reborn again. But not as an animated show anymore. It is the Saturday Morning Adventures comic with IDW. 
Following in the footsteps of G.I. Joe and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it returns from, with a new IDW publishing miniseries, Dungeons & Dragons Saturday Morning Adventures. Marking the 40th anniversary of the Saturday Morning Animated Cartoon Series, the four-issue comic features writers David Booher, Sam Mangs, and artist George... Oh, boy. Cambodays. Sure. Cambodays. That makes sense. Charting new territory in the world of D&D whilst reawakening childhood nostalgia for longtime fans. It is going to be a four-issue comic run from IDW Publishing. Saturday Morning Adventures Dungeons and Dragons featuring the entire cast of the 80s cartoon in lovely comic animated form. Go on sale in March 2023. Cool. Classic characters. Classic. Classic comic book. And also those people that you mentioned are notable. They have worked on things like Rick and Morty and um, I forget what the other guy worked on. Yeah. It in the article. Very, very good. Very good uh, writers and artists. Yes. All right. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons gets its own trivial pursuit. I, funny fact, I actually had one of my friends say, well, I was going to buy this for you, but we could not find any of the cards online to like preview. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the... the uh, Trivial Pursuit Dungeon Dragons Ultimate Edition is a new version of Trivial Pursuit that tests the player's knowledge of both in-game lore and actual, and the actual history of the game and the rules. There are six categories, uh, miscellaneous, history, monsters, dungeons and adventures, characters, and cosmology, um, with questions pulled from all five editions of Dungeons and Dragons. Oof, that, that's, that's where the rough part comes <laughs> in for me. Right? We're very versed in 5e. Very well versed in 5e. That's about it. Uh, you can your characters, your little movie characters are going to be a beholder, an illithid, a owlbear, a mimic. I don't know what that one is. Uh, <laughs> and sound uh, out. Well, now they only list uh, they only list beholder, mind flayer, and mimic. Then they have three other ones, which I think one is an invisible stalker, and I can't tell what the last one is in that picture. Uh, there's a demi lich. Is that a demi lich? And I think a gelatinous cube. Oh, uh, that makes sense. That's a gelatinous cube. Uh, so yeah, it's available on Amazon for forty nine ninety nine. Now, now, sidebar about Trivial Pursuit. I have a love hate relationship with Trivial Pursuit. Played a fair no- amount of Trivial Pursuit in my youth with the family, with the fam, with the fam. Never won because it was all old shit. Sure, you were but no a, a young warthog. I was but a young warthog. I. I'm afraid of the D&D Trivial Pursuit and not being uh, knowledgeable enough in the Dungeons and Dragons Trivial Pursuit and thus getting things wrong yeah. in front of people that are like, you're the D&D guy. So that's so embarrassing. I know. Can't handle that. Lastly. Lastly, Baldur's Gate 3 adds D&D's most controversial paladin class in the is coolest it? way. Is it? Eh, anyway, so as we know, um, Baldur's Gate 3 had its an initial... Um, uh, launch beta launch back in 2020 and as it approaches its full release they've continued to add tons of classes races which are now species i don't know species oh yeah. and story content uh into the we game need a new term for that <laughs> the final patch before full release uh will include one of the remaining classes from D 5th edition that has not yet been included and that is the paladin uh it will also it will include the oath of devotion and the oath of ancients uh and then it will also include the Oathbreaker Paladin, which will um, be the quote-unquote evil paladin class. Is it controversial? I don't know. I, I, f- I, feel like, I feel like something like the Oath of the Crown is a little bit more controversial. Like, I just think, the bad ones. <laughs> I think the idea with the Oath of uh, the Oathbreaker is that you can't really select it in character creation. You're supposed to... This is sp- kind of the only RP subclass change yeah. that they offer initially. But anyway, so uh, yeah, super cool. Oathbreaker. Love an Oathbreaker Go- Paladin. Going the abilities are actually quite strong for the Oathbreaker Paladin in 5e. Yeah. So, um, highly recommend. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be available in Baldur's Gate 3. All right, well, that is that is it for the news. Uh, let's go back to the D&D draft. We need to fill back in the chart. We do. So if anybody has any other suggestions, we'll be, we'll be taking them from the chat. But otherwise, yeah. we got a few, a few waiting in the wings. Yes. Now, of course, if you've made it this far, you should check out the link 
in the bio of all of our social media. That's where you find our link tree where you can subscribe to us on the YouTube. You can follow us on the TikTok where over 30,000 of you follow us on the TikTok. We are actually like, we, we've gone, I feel like we've crossed the threshold on TikTok from small creator to notable creator. Mm. We're not big creator. No, we're not big. Not big. But we've got we've crossed the threshold of sl- of small creator on TikTok to now notable. Like I feel like people just kind of know us if they're indeed like they've seen our shit. We we have if some they're... lovely friends such as uh, uh, Dandy DM, mm-hmm. Beardic Inspiration, who's been a little active in the chat. We'll talk yeah. about some of his comments. Love later. love Beardic. Um, but yes, you can follow us on the TikTok. You can also subscribe to us on the YouTube. Follow us on the Instagram, where you'll be able to vote on this week's D and draft that we have just completed at the beginning of the podcast. You can also find our drive through RPG where we have monthly free homebrew with the exception of the month of December. We have not released a thing yet because uh, toward the end of the month, we're going to release a uh, comprehensive collection of all of our homebrew, uh, all of our free homebrew, I should say, with a small selection from our paid homebrew, which is our Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement, a 38-page supplement with art and uh, new content compatible with 5th edition D&D using the hit dice mm-hmm. to fuel Blood Magic things and i want to use the hit dice more for a different set that doesn't damage you (laughs) when you use it uh but there's going to be a small selection from that paid homebrew in the collection the collection of free homebrew we will be charging for we're going to do that 4.99 as well but we're going to have a bunch of discount codes for all of that just make that as cheap as possible and logistically i'm not sure if we can do this but i want to make it under the same listing so that we can update it every year and if you buy it once Every year you can go back and re- re-download, re-download it, it with be- all the new content every year. I think that would be cool. We'll look into it. Don't we'll you look, worry. We'll look into that. But that'll be available by the end of the month, by the end of the year on Drive Through RPG. And I believe that is all of the links in the... Oh, the Discord server. Of course, the Discord server where 260 people joined us. We have a couple server boosters. Uh, we did a giveaway for some Magic the Gathering Arena's code cards that we had, as well as uh, a kit bashed mini that we tried to give away uh, for Papa Lycan to support his cause, but mm. uh, never returned our email, the winner. So gave it away in the Discord. Yeah. Uh, you can also, well, we also want to do like some Discord Nitro giveaways and all that kind of stuff, be a bit more active. Uh, it's been a quiet week in the Discord as it is the holiday season. It is the holiday season. But that is the reason for the season. At the end of the podcast, we always get questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and or ideas from the community, priority given to people in the Discord, and then the TikTok live chat. But first, the D and Draft, Sam. The D and Draft. Do we have any recommendations? Not yet. Well, let's do D and D feats then. D and D feats. All right. We need more D and D things in the D and Draft. <laughs> I don't think we've drafted anything D and D yet. Uh, nope. Nope. Right, cool. We have not. Cool. Cool. So the tiktok live what do we got tiktok live uh yes we kind of did this last minute so there's nothing in the discord yeah. uh first off um nautica dot underscore zero who was asking about jester earlier says hey perhaps you need a bigger litter box she's we got have, like four we have three litter boxes three. one in my bedroom which was the room that she was first introduced and then downstairs we have two litter boxes and she chooses to poop outside of both just outside of both of them so i know so i've i've learned quite a bit from uh the cat daddy uh jackson galaxy Mm. cat daddy and she knows that that's where she's supposed to go it's clear but i'm not not sure what specifically i need to do to facilitate her doing it because she seems very picky about her litter box she does the moment that there is any any poo or pee in the litter box that litter box is then done out of commission yeah and i'm not replacing the litter every time she goes to the bathroom that'd be ridiculous you we can't even keep up with that couldn't couldn't not gonna do that um so i want to i want to try some new different brands of litter mix it in with the current kind and phase the old kind out eventually but we're just, we're just gonna play around i, I appreciate the advice though so. Cruel, spelled with a K, and two L's. As you do. And no E. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Cruel269 says, hey, I need to write a backstory for my human druid. Any tips? Is it Krull? Because it's no E. K-R-U-L-L. Krull. Sure. I'm going with Krull. Human druid. Backstory. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you know Snow White and the poisoned apple? I do. What What if the apple didn't kill her? 
or like put a curse on her. Wait. And it's just like now you're now you're nature. <laughs> now you are nature. <laughs> now you're nature. Congratulations. Um that's a weird one, but you know. It's definitely hard to give um we are we are not by any means creative writers. We're very factual writers. Very factual writers. Love you you tell us that you tell us to like figure out the logistics of like a government and defense systems for a city. We can figure that out. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, Pop, we got population, that. trade, totally. Backstory. <laughs> and it's also really hard to give tips on a, for backstory writing when we're not really sure of the campaign. Yeah. And back backstories need to be to the campaign. They also need to be special to you. Mm-hmm. What do you want? Yeah. Um, when it comes to druids, generally there's tribes of druids. Uh, if you look at like Critical Role, they have an entire organization surrounding them with the Ashari. Uh, Druids can also be nomadic and individualist. Um, that's kind of more of the ranger thing, but there's a lot of overlap there. You could be an eco terrorist. Could be an eco terrorist. You could. You could. Be, oh my gosh, your druid basically just be Barrett from Final Fantasy VII and Avalanche, the eco terrorists. Just do that, even though they're they're the good guys. But that's don't throw soup on paintings, though. Yeah, no, don't. That's just right. that's just wasteful. Moving on, Gucci Gang Potato says, where is the cat? Here she is. Right here. All right. Um, It's not often that she curls up on the table during the podcast, but when she does, it is always a joy to behold, and uh, she just kind of comes and goes as she pleases. We talked to uh, Charles Smith Org and Cats and Mice a little bit earlier when we were talking about uh, the, the investors meeting. It is that easy. Cat pops in and says, look. I would 100% let both of you damage me. Just saying. Thank you. Could, you could lay on the table. You could lay me on the table. Or if, or I could be under the table. Cats and Mice points out that we found the bard. I don't know who that is. Uh, th- I, I think. I think thank you. I'm also a little scared now. <laughs> we'll move Do on. we have simps? Hold on. Hold on. Are there Dungeon Bro simps? I don't know. I don't know how to assess that because we've had from the viral video of the butt slapping there were plenty of simps but that was also a bit a bit charged sure. it also was viral sure. and reached well beyond D and D TikTok but do we just have like simps that'd be cool that's no should we make an OnlyFans no should we make an OnlyFans you can make your OnlyFans a t- Dungeon Bros OnlyFans tasteful that's- tasteful I'm not I'm not talking like OnlyFans OnlyFans I'm talking like Markiplier only fans here's, like tasteful nudes. Here's what we need to do. Which, by the way, Markiplier has an only fans, which is broke the hilarious. Internet. Broke the internet. Now, here's what we need to do. You remember that filter you used on uh, Michaela's photos for the Blood Magic pack? Yes. We do that. So in our future packs, we just take photography of ourselves, put that filter on, and throw it in the pack. Charge for the pack. Hmm. They get D and D content and hmm. us content. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Tasteful. Tasteful filtered? Tasteful. Okay. Uh, I could do that. Back to Watsy. Um, <laughs> Cats and Mice says Watsy should feel threatened. Good. Companies, there is this new wave of belief where people just want to go to bat for their for their team. Very tribal modern internet, be it political, but oftentimes with dumb shit that doesn't matter. The Sony fanboys and the Xbox fanboys have been going at it for oh, as God. long as those organizations have existed. And they're the Sony fanboys that think Sony can do no wrong. Sony's doing some stuff wrong. Ooh, yeah. PlayStation is not looking good, right? Like, doesn't optically look good right now. Xbox. Oh, my gosh. Game Pass is such a deal. It's so good for the industry. Xbox can do no wrong. Let them buy up all the companies. Uh, no. Consolidation, not good for the video game industry. Game Pass, not good for video game sales and the health of games, and not good. And you should be able to acknowledge that. Don't trust corporations. Yeah. Don't. Generally speaking, not looking out for you. <laughs> and and also, it, it often comes down to more of your passion about the activity you're in, and especially in, there's a lot of mm-hmm. um, um, Wizards of the Coast... I feel has had a lot of support from the community. And rightfully so and with rightfully 5e. So. 5e was a great product. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't also be criticizing them at the same time. As the community, 
we've told them they can do no wrong. And so they're now like, all right, we'll wring these fuckers dry. But if Just you're passionate them. about something, you should be able to criticize it. You should have the want to criticize it. If you love something, you should be their harshest critic. I love Kingdom Hearts, and I talk a lot of shit about Kingdom Hearts as much as I love it. I love D&D, and we talk very negatively about Wizards of the Coast here. We don't hate them. We're, we're terrified of what they're going to do and how they're going to ruin things. So, um, Beardick pops in and says, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's up, Beardick? Hey, Beardick. What's up? Uh, Cats and Mice again says, so many people create homebrew. That is way more laid out than um, I assume the current what uh, what Wizards makes. Yeah, there is some homebrew that is better. Oh yeah, but we've we've t- we did an entire episode talking about this book that we have up here, Taldori Reborn. This third party, independent, published D and D book, I would argue, is better than pretty much. Anything Wizards of the Coast has printed for 5e. And we've heard from when Matt where Matt Mercer worked with Wizards of the Coast to do the um, Wild Mount book. He he puts forth so many so much uh, of creative work to them. He was like, I don't know how much they need. I'm going to keep giving them stuff because I have more stuff. I'm passionate about this. And Wizards and the people were like, dude, chill. Chill. It's fine. It's fine. So when you... And as an organization that make that consistently is making products to go for sale you need to have that you need to shut off the creative valve sometimes to like finalize products which is totally fine but with third-party content there are some people that you can just let the passion flow directly into a book and then organize it all at the end and you get an amazing product that has both high quality printing high quality art high quality content like Taldori Reborn like NCDM like like their content is better than most Wizards of the Coast products. Because they produce content at the rate they want to. Yeah. And they want to put a passion into it. Absolutely. Um, Cats and Mice, very active day. Cats and Mice, thank you for being an, uh, an yeah. all-star in this yeah, chat. You're great. Um, I got Worlds Without num- Worlds without Numbers and Star Without Numbers. I think this is in reference to Spelljammer. Mm-hmm. And it helped uh, them more than anything Spelljammer had in it. Um, and, and they are upset with how they created a game about... Sh- travel on ships and then not have any ship combat at all yeah they're like go check out ghost of salt marsh if you want ship rules it was such a letdown yeah and the ghost of salt marsh ship rules are like fine they're not great they could have come up with something really cool and interesting because the whole they also have all like the cool helm magic items for like the the spell jammer mm-hmm. part of the ship yeah and just like nothing to do with it <laughs> Spell Chambers is a fucking letdown, dude. There's a reason that basically immediately after release, you could get the three pack of all of the books with like a DM screen and poster for like 30 bucks. Yeah. There's a reason for that. Beardick says, I think there is a very strong possibility that we will see in absence of an OGL, a Kirkland D&D. Kirkland Kirkland. being (laughs) Costco's uh, (laughs) store brand. Uh, perhaps maybe even a step closer to OSR that creators will create for. Yeah, I could totally see Wizards of the Coast wanting not to promote. And I'm not saying I agree with this. I could see them wanting to go to individuals or organizations like MCDM going to Critical Role, going to Dimension 20, going to these individuals and saying, let's license something out and create a contract. As opposed to just this all-encompassing thing. So then people like us, smaller creators like Runesmith, as awesome as Stibble's Codex of Companions is, I don't think that's big enough scale for Wizards of the Coast to ever reach out. Right. MCDM is. Critical Role is. But that cuts off 95 plus percent of homebrew creators yeah. with amazing content. I don't know. And it, to be fair, it also cuts off a lot of shit content. Eh, you know. Gotta filter it. If you're going to yeah. go and get some of this homebrew content, you do have to filter it. You yeah. have to check it out. Oh, yeah. You have to. Yeah. Or maybe just check out the free pay what you want ones. Like, Ooh, like for example, the Genre Bros. On Drive Through RPG. Link in the link tree in the bio. Some of our stuff. Yeah. Some of our stuff really good. Yeah. Some of our stuff's really good. Some of apparently, our stuff is like, eh, well. Apparently my Necromancer class, like, 
Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was a popular one. Apparently, that slapped. That was a popular one. Um, Flocky the DM says, "Wouldn't the uh, would the OGL remain in place for five E? Meaning we could yes. play create for five E? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. They can't do anything to that. Yeah, the much. OGL for five E already exists. That will that would not go anywhere. So the only workaround people would have." Because they've already assured us that one D and D is backwards compatible with fifth edition, is people using the five E OGL to create five E homebrew that also passively is just compatible with one D and D. Um and that's where that gray area would get into. It's like, oh, I want to create a cleric subclass. Clerics get their subclass at level three now. Yeah. No longer level one. So and and I think do they have the same number of subclass? They have the same number of subclass abilities, so that wouldn't change. Yeah. So is it like, all right, here's your first subclass ability, and you don't put a level on it because it would be level one in five e, but it would be level three in one d and d. Or what about certain classes that have different number of subclass abilities between fifth edition and one d and d? How are you going to remedy that? It's like here's a bonus feature that you could put in between here, like. You, you get into that weird gaming the system thing and how far can you push it without Wizards of the Coast being like hammered down. Yeah. You know. Bearded Cosback and says, I think you're right. I think we need to accept. Uh, or, yeah, accept. Watsi is trying to train and condition a new customer base and they're willing to sacrifice the old one. They want players that spend as much money as DMs. Yes. Yes. Um, I will. I, as, a, as a little devil's advocate here. You could argue that they've done that with every edition of D&D. The number of people that were very upset with the changes to 5th edition when they were playtesting 5th edition and they were like, oh, they're getting rid of the old school. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen with every edition. Um, I am the monetization scheme I am concerned with and trying to get everyone to spend more money on it as opposed to being more consumer friendly is what I am concerned with. Yeah. I think you're, I think else. to your point about uh, them, you know, whenever they change edition, that can be said, but I think them blatantly stating <laughs> yeah, that absolutely. we want people to spend more money. Yes. Your company. Of course you want them you to want spend them more money. More. You want to be more profitable as a company. Yes. Do it right. Do it, do it in a way that fosters a good, environment for your game and your product not one that just extorts it right i think we can honestly i'm I'm not sure how people don't understand that the reason people uh, ascribe to or like don't or uh, become members on patreons mm-hmm. and and on youtube become followers absolutely is because they enjoy the content the content yeah. of their creators are quality and the great thing about patreon and a great thing about like super following or subscribing on Twitch is if the product isn't good anymore, you can stop, but you will still have access to most of the products. Yeah. You won't get access to all the extra benefits, but most Patreon creators are YouTubers and YouTube videos are free and they can remain free Mm -hmm. and they will remain free. So obviously wizards of the coast is a scale that they can't be like, here's all our stuff for free and then support us on the back end. Right. Uh, William Nobody 96 says what uh, what happened to D&D it used to be fun now it doesn't look like it used to be it looks like a husk of its former self um, well, the, he, I get that it, it, the, the feeling of it being very dire that's just I feel like a lot of the dire feeling that fans of D&D are having is because Wizards of the Coast is poorly communicating things and because it's not out yet yeah once we, most of the dire feeling is in the mist, the fog of war surrounding everything. Once we know, I think things are going to be a lot less dire mm-hmm. when we just have concrete information about what is going to happen. And thankfully, D and D as a tabletop role playing game is what you make it. Yeah. And if one D and D and their monetization scheme is bad, you could still play five five E. You oh, yeah. still play fifth edition. There's a lot of a lot of fifth edition content already out there, and I bet I'm it's going to be even more. <laughs> people still people still play three point five, and not not Pathfinder, but three point five. They yeah. also play Pathfinder, but the fact is, we will probably be seeing people playing fifth edition games for years to come. Mm-hmm. And if one D and D is bad, and there's a lot of problems with it, and bad monetization, and people don't like the direction they're going, you can bet that. For one, the hashtag open open D&D, mm-hmm. people will move to a different system. I would argue 
just keep playing fifth edition. Fifth edition's good. Is it perfect? No. Is one D and D going to be perfect? Absolutely not. That's not possible. Yeah. Are there changes to one D and D that are nice? Yeah. Are there changes to one D and D that aren't as nice or just changing for the sake of changing? Yeah. So if you don't like it, keep playing fifth edition. Keep buying fifth edition homebrew. Keep buying fifth edition books if you want. There's plenty of fucking 5e stuff that you could never hope to get through all of it in a lifetime of regular D and D play. Things put out this year. There's yeah. more th- between what th- uh, uh, an anthology book, two full campaign settings. Well, off, just off the top of my head, just off the top of my head, Call of the Netherdeep, Curse of Strahd, Ghost of Saltmarsh, Strixhaven, Theros, Spelljammer, Dragonlance, and that's a lot of the recent stuff. Yeah, not even getting into the Sword Coast and the Forgotten Realms. Just just on our shelf alone, there's more stuff than we than we would reasonably be able to play while existing together. Yeah, you know, and we still have hopes of 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 playing other things. There's a uh, a bunkers and badasses. I've been playing in a yeah. kids on bikes game recently, yeah. and these are all things that absolutely deserve your time. Mm-hmm. So. That, that you know what? I think we should make our Dungeon Bros stance here. If you don't like 1D&D, you don't need to quit D&D. Keep playing 5th Edition. If people don't move over to 1D&D and continue to play 5th Edition, uh, they'll know. They'll pick up on that. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the best way you can uh, communicate with Watsi is by not supporting, is by not buying their thing, not giving yep. them your dollar. Oh, yeah. Uh, protest with your wallet. Yes. Uh, Tito... Ma- Yes, Tito Macaroni asks, "Do you guys play magic as well?" We do. Oh yeah, we play. We we dabble. We dabble. We dabble in a bit of. We totally magic haven't gathering. spent lots of money on it this year. Don't look. Don't look at the shelves that over there. You can't see them on camera. Don't look at them. Um, also, don't look at the play mats over there and the and the and the double deck box here and the and the single that I bought that I haven't scanned into my collection yet. And don't worry about it. Uh, Communist Octopus asks, what breed of dog would have the tastiest meat? That would be the hot dog. Cats and mice. All these, all these fucking commies out here eating, eating pets. Cats and mice says D&D Monopoly is pretty fun though. Oh, well, Monopoly is fun. Monopoly, arguably, and I will argue this, one of the great board games of all time. Up there with chess, which by the way, should have won the board game draft. I should have won the board game draft. He had all this new age shit and all the new age board gamers were on our Instagram. Skewed the vote. Call for a recount. <laughs> um, maybe maybe once we get more more people. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, uh, a, little bit, a little bit of conversation around a jester. Of course. I mean, the bean is just adorable. I, I think I think that's a good... Unless there's anything really good, I think that's a good place to stop. Yeah. I... I uh, we got a couple more questions, but we've answered them all in the past. Actually, ow. And uh, so yeah. if you... Yeah. Did you break a foot? <laughs> nope. Well, neither my foot nor the chair foot. Oh, oof. Ow. But I, I actually am on the clock right now, so I do need to get back to work. I have to be at work in an hour. So so everybody, thank you very much for uh, joining us today and, yes. and having some lovely conversations with us. Of course, you can check the link in the link tree in the bio. You can follow us on the TikTok Subscribe to us on the YouTube. Join our Discord server, wherever 260 of you already do. You can find our drive-thru RPG, where most of our stuff is free, pay what you want, as well as paid content. We will be having a compilation that will be updated every year, hopefully, that we will be releasing for $4.99. Uh, the price may increase on future versions of it, but, you know. Who knows? We'll see. We'll get. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. 12 months away. 12 months away. You can also follow us on the Instagram where you can get some BTS and vote on the DN draft again. This week it was anime. anime. And the Bean has graced us with their presence for most of the podcast in various forms. So I would say this is a good one. Yeah, overall. Thank you guys very much. And until next time. <laughs>